I think I have more to learn uh, from those uh, women who had the challenges of a conflict, who had to change uh, beyond their uh, will. Um, their, they had to leave their houses. They lost some of their uh, relatives, sometimes very close people. Uh, some of them lost their families and they uh, raised children uh, and uh, so I think uh, I should humble myself and basically say that those women know how to survive and they are the real strong women and, and those of us who live in the comfort of a regular life without a conflict talking about our difficulties in our daily lives uh, we should uh, simply re be reminded of those real lives and real difficulties. So um, I don't think I should be saying anything about how to be strong to those women because they are the ones who are already strong. Um, on the other hand, I can only tell them that there are other women all around the world who are unfortunately in the same situation with them. So it's not only about the women who had to be uh, internally displaced um, in Georgia after the war in Abkhazia and also in South Ossetia. Um, and there were a lot of IDPs in Karabakh. Uh, there were a lot of uh, people in now Syria, women, and what we see in this conflict situations, women are the most powerful and it's because of them that uh, people survive, the children, the next generation survive. I'm a manager, yeah. I lead a team here now. Uh, I think of myself as a technic director of a football team. There are different players around you with different potentials and capabilities. They need to believe in you, in your integrity and in your uh, ability. Uh, and, uh, and they need to feel that uh, they are part of this um, whatever we're doing. So I think transparency, good communications, um, predictability, uh, team building, and uh, integrity are essential for either women or men. It's very hard to find a woman who instinctively wouldn't be uh, willing to protect her own. It starts with the house, family, home, friends, street, city, the country. We have that instinct of protecting. Men also have that instinct. but. Um, I'm trying to be diplomatic here and I don't know how to put it, but I think women manage their egos better than men. Men are given certain other uh, instincts and qualities which uh, in the evolution of humankind they have used for physical fighting. The women would avoid that physical fight until the very end. It's, it, this threshold of physical a fight uh, is, is very low. In a, and, and we, when we see it uh, in high schools or places, we, we feel weird because this is not what we're used to. Because we're better in using our languages, our uh, communication, verbal communication skills. Um, but then, Gender is not only thing that matters in peacemaking. Uh, 
it needs skills. I'll give you an example which I'm now currently reading and thinking. Um, Tamar Mepe was chosen the king. She became the king, the queen, because there were no other alternatives. Boys, yeah. So, and she became a very successful uh, ruler of her country. Um, she made wars. It, it's not that she didn't war. She made wars, but she knew how to make peace, sustain peace. But what happened after her, when you look, her daughter was not that sort of a peacemaker. So it's not about gender. It's about uh, sometimes personality, sometimes education, and sometimes uh, I think uh, it's certain people should not be doing certain jobs. <laughs> it's like basically, you could be a very good engineer, architect, but maybe not a peacemaker. You're a man or a woman, doesn't matter. So we need to find the right women who are equipped, who are educated, who have the right instincts, who have the right skills, right hearts uh, for peacemaking. It's not only by donor money, it's not about money. It's about mentorship, it's about solidarity, it's about uh, the fact that they, um, they're very proud people, by the way. Those I have met were very proud people. They don't want uh, the money. They want opportunities, equal opportunities. And I think that's very fair. And they should have it. So whatever the projects that we do with the IDP communities, we try to establish um, uh, employment uh, projects, like um, creating a shoemaking workshop. Uh, during the pandemic, we wanted them to uh, join the workforce doing masks, and they did. Uh, a bread factory where they could operate, learn, uh, sell bread, sell pastries. So they need to learn new skills, but to do that, they need, uh, if together with the, the Georgian government or the Abkhazian government here, uh, we try those projects where they will feel empowered. So I would say, instead of us telling them how to be strong, they're already very strong, maybe we could tell them or ask them uh, how do we work further together so that they will be uh, having their own uh, sustainable, self-sustained life without depending on uh, anyone else.